While watching the online lectures, be sure to use the attached packet to take notes on. You'll find the link for the packet here at the title page for each chapter. Click on it, then print out the packet. These gray boxes in the online lectures refer to the slides and pages in the packet. In this online lecture, we're going to learn our atomic orbitals in organic chemistry, the two that are important for us to know. So let's talk about them. This is very simple. Let's say you have an XYZ plane. We're going to see this is very three-dimensional. The first orbital we should know is called the 1s orbital. And remember, an orbital is simply a region in space where we can expect to find an electron. And what I'm trying to show you here is the spherical space that this orbital takes up. And remember, the 1 in the 1s means that this orbital is one unit away from the nucleus, or we can say it's the smallest orbital around a nucleus. Therefore, using this logic, there's also something called a 2s orbital. Remember, the s tells us the shape of the orbital, and 2 tells us how far from the nucleus the orbital can extend. And there just so happens to be a 3s orbital, a 4s, 5, 6, you can keep going. They'd all simply just be bigger and bigger spheres. Now, the other orbital we should know in organic chemistry is something called the p orbital. And it's shaped like this. And this particular orbital happens to be on the y-axis. So more specifically, we would call this the 2py orbital. Again, p tells us the shape. 2 tells us how far this orbital extends from the nucleus, and y is telling us it's on the y-axis. There is no such thing as a 1p orbital. The p orbitals always start in the second shell. Now, if you remember from a previous online lecture, there were three types of p orbitals, and here's the reason why. The other one would lie on the x-axis. This would be the 2px orbital. And the third type of p orbital would simply lie along the z-axis. He would be the 2pz orbital. Another thing that I want to mention here, too, is that how do we know these orbital shapes? Well, again, it's high-order quantum mechanics, and there's these special wave equations that can actually calculate and make the predictions of where an electron could reside. And those complicated equations that are beyond organic chemistry spit out simply these shapes. So we're only concerned with the results of those equations, not how those equations work. So remember, what does this all mean to us? This helps us get a better picture of carbon's electronic configuration. Remember, we saw before that we can use this particular notational device to express it. And remember, carbon has six electrons, and this is where the six electrons reside. And remember, notice we have the three types of p orbitals. One would be the 2px, the next would be the 2py, and the last would be the 2pz. And what I want you to see here is that drawing the electronic configuration this way, we should be able to think of the electrons and the orbitals that surround carbon. So for instance, the notation here is telling us that we have carbon with a nucleus. We have a 1s orbital that has two electrons in it. That corresponds to this right here. We also have the 2s orbital with two electrons in it, which would look like this. And here are the two electrons in the 2s orbital. And we also have the p orbital right here. That means in the 2px orbital, which faces this way, has one electron in it. And we, of course, the last one, we have the 2py orbital that has an electron in it, which would be like this right here. And then remember, we have the empty 2pz orbital sticking out right here. So remember, it's important in organic chemistry that when given the electronic configuration in the notational way in the upper left, that you could think about the picture here on the right. We'll see later on how this will come in handy. However, there's one more orbital principle we should understand. Let's go back to the 2s orbital here. He happens to have what's called a radial node. And what that simply means is that within the 2s orbital, there's a thin sphere shell where there is zero electron probability. What does that mean? That simply means in that little shell within the s orbital, we wouldn't expect to find an electron. So we're simply looking at this as 
Yes, the 2s orbital is a region in space where we can expect to find an electron, but there's one sliver part of it where we wouldn't expect to find the electron. That's all we really have to know about that. I'd also like you to know that nodes are possible when it comes to p orbitals. The node for the p orbital looks like this, and it's called simply a nodal plane. What we're seeing here is that in this plane of space, we expect to not find any electrons. So we only expect to find electrons in the top lobe of the p orbital, let's say, and in the lower lobe, but not in between. And this completes our knowledge of the basic structure of atomic orbitals.